Podcast. Your movies are sort of like a videographic soundtrack to my life in, in the sense that it, my, in my formative years when I was just trying to find out what I like, uh, Star Wars is pretty much all I had at the time, but then smart sci-fi, smart horror, like like The Thing and, uh, and sort of you know, intelligent stuff like Escape from New York, because you think Escape from New York is just, oh, it's just a popcorn flick and it's kind of ridiculous, but it, it kind of is a, a, crit a critique of society in a way. It's just, that's what sci-fi does. They sneak, they secretly or slyly critique society. And it, in a way, that kind of reminds me of uh, Judge Dredd or it's just a critique in society. It's a way of approaching uh, the world we live in. Uh, and I think that's, I, that's the appeal of it, I think, is that we see elements of our society that have been somehow perverted or taken to the next step or whatever. And so I think uh, the the ability to see ourselves in it is what is so attractive as opposed to, you know, some some sci-fi is completely concocted mythology yeah. and it's a little hard to understand it and, and unless it somehow relates. I have a couple of us. names but I don't want to be insulting to other people but uh -huh. I, I, I know I have an idea and I hate those shows but um, I uh, like I'm, I'm a lifelong fan also of the Alien franchise. It's always been a really big fanboy thing for me. Yeah. And, and it, that's what they call gritty, real sci-fi that's based in how we are today, but flash forward 200 years, what are we like now? Exactly. And that, a, lot of the, a lot of your films, they're just, they're a, a kind of a realistic attempt to see what would happen if this happened, what, how would we react, and what would that look like? It's not E.T., it's like the thing. It's, it's right. why do we assume that's going to be friendly when we, it's completely alien and foreign? How does that happen? How do you avoid being... You know, typecast as a cinematographer. Like, how did you actually expand that universe for yourself and get just do so many different projects? So, so varied. So, uh... well, um, I had done a bunch of movies before Halloween, mm -hmm. but when Halloween came out, it was a big success. Yeah. Eventually, <laughs> uh, it grew into a big success, um, and I immediately got calls to do all these other horror films that everyone else hoped to you know, emulate uh, yeah. the original Halloween. And um, I said, well, I'm, I can get typed very easily. <clears throat> I liked all kinds of films that, um, as I described, they take an audience on a journey they can't go in real life. Yeah. Um, all kinds of journeys, you know, whether it's animation with Roger Rabbit or dinosaurs uh, that um, in Jurassic Park that don't don't really exist. I, I hope I'm not disillusioning you, but the dinosaurs didn't really exist. Well, um, they've never gone away. You know no, that, right? They, exactly. They're still here in the form of they've chickens. They've always and been here. So, <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> and the Back to the Futures and all yeah. of the, they're all films that need imagination. They touch us because they take us places we wish we could go, but you know we can't really. Um, as opposed to uh, you know films films that were always just sort of the same as, as others you know I've I've done some romantic comedies but um, romantic comedy is sort of like real real life or, or can be romantic tragedy yeah can be romantic comedy then turns into tragedy depends on who you get hooked up with you know that kind of thing but um, it, it, uh, these other films are all ones that take you somewhere that uh, you wish you could go yeah. and um, I, I enjoyed doing that so I looked for a great deal of variety mm -hmm. within that kind of feeling of I, I, uh, I have a, some ADHD issues you know hyperactivity so uh -huh. I'm kind of the same way I, I, I like I would do 10 jobs at once if I can just do the part-time yeah, yeah well, that's, I like to spread yeah. myself around a lot yeah. what did you think and I'm afraid of a trans is going to be what do you think of the uh, the, re uh, the the sort of the, the I don't know what to call it. I'm not sure if it's a reboot or a homage or a, a true to life sequel uh, oh, to, the, to Halloween. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I haven't seen it yet. It's okay. on my list. Uh, I'm hoping to see it when I get back to uh, LA. But um, you know, I I've always been suspicious, um, as I was saying, of making a doing a remake of a film that was successful the first time. Yeah. Um, why not remake a movie that was 
had a good story or premise, but was badly made. Execution. Yeah, yeah. I got you. You know, so, uh, but uh, I, I hear relatively positive things about it, so I... Yeah, I, my, mean, I, I saw it, uh, and my, friend, my colleague and I were remarking on its similarities. He noted things that I couldn't even recall because I was just, uh, in the moment, I was absorbed. I watched the movie, and right. it felt like the original. And they did, they, they duplicated shots that you helped to set up, I'm assuming. Uh, and there's a lot of you in this movie, and I think you might be pleased. Um, they did. A, you must have seen the, the the latest thing that they did. Yes. Yeah. I, I, now, were you pleased with that? Did that sort of hit the right boxes for you, or did you? Uh, well, what, once again, uh, you know, it was sort of like that yeah, was a prequel, but yeah. they were sort of remaking, you know, and there were an awful lot of um, things that we did that uh, showed up in it, you know, and uh, so they I went wasn't. Back to the well. I yeah, I I wasn't uh, overwhelmed. But but I did appreciate their the effort yeah, they sure. went to. It, it seemed extreme, like setting up situations for the future. They did, you know, it could have been poorly executed by others that didn't have a vested interest or a love of the genre. Right. So I'm really glad that the people who did it were those people. Yes, yeah, so it was nicely executed. Uh, what's on the agenda for you? Do you have any anything you're working on project-wise, or you just take, kicking your feet and going to conventions? Like, what uh, what can we look um, forward to you for in the next year? Well, I. Um, I started going to conventions like a, maybe a couple of years ago. Yeah. You know, I wasn't really that aware of them as far as you know being somebody to participate. Yeah. Um, and I've been enjoying it because I, I really I get to talk to a lot of interesting people, um, fans who remember more about a movie than I do. You know, yeah. and uh, so uh, I've been uh, doing conventions, um, commercials. Uh, I did a a uh, little Netflix um, movie about uh, six months ago. So, uh, yeah. I, I mean, uh, I have too much stuff to memorize. Can yeah. You, can you, uh, you know the name of that, or is it is it sort of a secret until it's released? Or no, it's uh, it's called Anastasia. Once okay. upon a time. All right. And it's a uh, sort of a kids' telling of the uh, the Romanovs and. And all of that. That's but what I thought it might be uh, the the uh, the, uh, the royal family of Russia back yeah. before they were okay. Yeah, they were they had been executed. So the daughter Anastasia um, was marked and always was a mystery. What happened to her? Mm -hmm. Why did uh, the rest of the family die? And they say she escaped. Yeah. Other people say no, she didn't. Uh, you know. So there was so there was kind of controversy about what happened to her. And so now this imagines the fact that uh, the court magician Rasputin yes. created a time tunnel oh, wow. and sent her to America in the 1980s and uh, so it's all about how a kid from that world relates to the modern world yeah, makes yeah. us think about what we have in the modern world so the kids who who have no concept about how fortunate or developed we are yeah have a little bit of a chance to reflect on it, but it, in the meantime, it's a fun fantasy. And I want to take the time to thank you so much uh, for really, you're a legend, and for oh, you to right. take five to ten minutes to talk to me means the world. So thank well, you, and uh, good yeah. luck on your future endeavors, like they say in your books. Oh, it's <laughs> been my pleasure talking. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Convention Junkies coverage of the 2018 London Comic Con. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see more, and let us know below what you think of this video. If you would like to help us with future projects, please visit our Patreon page.